Hello, it's been a while since we have done a DIY on the channel. So today I'm coming at you with an easy peasy skirt tutorial. I got this remnant of a cotton linen fabric at the fabric store a while ago and I hadn't quite figured out what I wanted to do with it until I saw a few photos around Instagram of these really cool maxi skirts. And I thought that could be a really easy thing to make. So I just checked how long it is, and it is 150 centimeters wide. It's folded in half at the moment, um, and about 1.3 meters long. So just to give you an idea of what I'm starting with. So I've just grabbed a belt from my wardrobe, and what I'm going to attempt to do, we'll see if this works, is put the fabric around my body and hold it up with a belt. I just want to see how much fullness and how much extra length I have left in the fabric. It's basically my skirt's going to be one big tube. It's going to overlap about a centimetre for the seam. Pretty much all be fullness. Looking at it like this, I definitely think there's going to be plenty of fabric. There's plenty of length, so I think I've got enough room to make a tie that will go around the middle. But I don't think there's too much fabric. So the first step I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut off a rectangle for the bottom um, to make a tie. But I'm just going to check how long I want it. So I'm just going to take my tape measure and tie it around my waist. My measuring tape is 1.5 meters long, which is the width of my fabric conveniently. Um, so if I do my tie the width of my fabric, that's what it's going to look like. So I've laid out my fabric on the floor, which... I didn't quite think through how I was going to film the talking part, but here I am. I'm going to cut off a rectangle slice off the bottom of the fabric now. And I want my tie to be 1.5 centimeters wide, so I'm going to double that, which is 3 centimeters. I think to be safe I'm going to add 2 centimeters for the seam allowance, so I need a total of 5 centimeters. So I'm just going to cut the 5 centimeter strip. strip which should go around my waist. I'm just gonna check it. I could always cut off another strip because I feel like it's gonna be too long anyway before I hem it just to extend these so I might see how this goes and that's all the cutting. So I've just ended up with one really big rectangle piece and one really long rectangle piece and that's it. Easy peasy. There's no curves. I feel like it would be a great little project if you're kind of a beginner sewer. I wish I was filming bringing this chair in, but I just carried it upstairs because I've had it downstairs for doing my work. Um, working from home in lockdown at the moment, and Jeffrey sat on it the whole way up the stairs. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. Oh! There's a cat in the background. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna start here at my overlocker, which I've got threaded up with some white thread. Since I'm using a light fabric, I've actually got my overlocker set up to stitch with four threads. It actually does a straight stitch down the side, so I kind of can get away with overlocking a seam and not sewing it, which is a bit of a cheeky shortcut. You're not technically meant to do that, but I'm feeling kind of lazy. I kind of want to get it done quickly because my one exciting trip out of the house during COVID lockdown is going to the supermarket. So I think I'm going to wear this to the supermarket this afternoon. Thrilling. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start with our little tie here. So all I'm going to do is fold it in half and then sew all the way down there. And the beauty about the overlocker is it's going to trim off all these dirty bits. And just like that, I've got one long tube which looks kind of like that. This distance between the seam and this edge I checked in is about 1.5 centimeters which is what I wanted. But how we're going to turn it through, thread it through the first layer so that it comes through the middle of the tube. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it, turn it upside down and start pushing it through the tube. So if I push it through, it's going to start pulling the end. Sometimes I have to jiggle it a bit to get it started. So I'm just pushing the end of the tube inside the tube. All right, I think we've nearly got it. So you're pushing this fabric over the top of it and then pulling it off the other side 
and as you do this it's kind of sucking it through so it's going to turn the whole thing inside out it's a little bit of a hand workout if you find you've pulled too much sometimes it gets a bit backed up so you do have to keep making sure that the end is pulling through so the safety pin is coming out of the end now so it's starting to come out from the inside so that's kind of what you've been doing but from the inside the whole time so we're just going to keep turning it out the right way but now we've got an entirely turned through tie next step which is creating another tube but a really big tube this time this is the skirt tube so I'm going to take my fabric and fold it in half and sew the two sides together. I have my big tube now so I'm just going to iron the seam. She's just ironing it so it's all open and nice and flat. And I'm also going to iron flat this tube that we prepared earlier. So I'm just going to roll it back and forth a bit until that seam pops out and it's nice and square and then give it an iron. I had a lunch break so now we've got an interesting lighting situation here but so I've got my tie ironed all nice and flat and my tube and now we're going to make the casing for the tie. My first step is going to be overlocking this edge because it's very frayed at the moment and then we'll get into some sewing. Now that it's overlocked all nicely I'm going to turn a certain amount down. The amount I'm going to turn down at least needs to be 1.5 because that's the size of my little tie but I think I'm going to add an extra 0.5 just for some space and a centimetre for the seam allowance and then I also want like a little bit of a paper bag look to the top so I'm going to add an extra about a centimetre so I'm going to do about five centimetres measure that and fold it over I've just pinned everything down five centimetres earlier as well doing that I haven't done the buttonholes for the tie to come out of so I'm quickly going to do that I want to find my front so I'm going to take the end with the seam and fold it in half because um, I want the seam at the back and so this is my front and what I want to do is have two little buttonholes either side of my front so that the tie can come out and I can tie it at the front so I'm just going to figure out where I want them to be I've just marked roughly where I'm going to sew my little channels so I want my buttonholes to sit between here but I don't want to put it through both sides I just want to put, put it through the front piece so I'm going to make sure this bit's flipped up and when I put it back down after the buttonholes are done, the buttonholes are only on the front. My sewing machine has a little buttonhole attachment that you can set the size of your buttonhole. Usually you put the button in there and then your buttonhole will be the perfect size. But because I don't have a button, I'm going to use my tie as the measure for my buttonhole. So I'm going to try line it up with that to start in line with my lower thing. So it made the buttonhole a bit bigger than I was expecting. So I've just adjusted my settings and I'm going to quickly unpack it. And that's why it's always important to check <laughs> whether it's actually the size you want. Especially if it's too small, that wouldn't have been good. Because you can always undo it and do it again. But... If you've already cut the hole, you can't. Ta-da! Two buttonholes. This one looks a bit janky, but oh well. I'm just going to repin it at five centimeters. So I'm going to sew a straight line one centimeter around the top. And then another line, I think it's 3.5 down there. So I'll have two rows of stitching going around the whole thing. Top row done. Just need to do the second one. The next step is to cut the button holes and thread our tie through. So you do just want to cut the first layer as well. So be a bit careful. I've got my handy dandy safety pin again so I'm just gonna 
put that through the end of my tie and now I'm just gonna thread it through this bad boy. Go in one buttonhole and out the other. And as you're pulling through you want to make sure you don't lose the other end which could happen because my tie is only as wide as this fabric so it's not much extra to play with so you just want to keep it a little bit gathered in places so it should look like two ties coming out of a tube and I'm gonna try it on and see how long I want to make it and if I need to extend my little ties any longer you put it on all you do is pull the ties until it's tight enough okay there's definitely enough tie in here and you'll also want to even out the gathers a bit if I'd done elastic in it the gathers would already be even but, but since this is an elastic free tutorial since all the stores are shut and I can't buy elastic I might take off my track pants just so it's less bulky under there I really like how the waistband's looking. This paper bag edge is exactly how I wanted it. But it is very long. <laughs> this is not how long I intended it to be. I'm thinking maxi, but not like floor length maxi. So I think I'm gonna maybe pin it to a point that I think I want it and then chop off the bottom and do a hem. So I'll just pin it and come back. Okay, that was tricky, but I think this is roughly how long I want it. What I'm gonna do is measure how long it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure how long this strip is and take away how much I want for a hem. So I'll probably want about that much to hem it up. So I'll measure that and then cut all the way around it the same length. So it looks like I'm gonna be cutting off 24 centimeters. My battery died just after I cut it so I had to charge it and now it's getting dark so hopefully we can film this before it dies completely. I'm just quickly gonna overlock around this edge like so and now I'm gonna turn it up six centimeters. All pinned so I'm gonna sew a five centimeter hem around now. So you can see the ends of my ties are a little bit fluffy but these are actually the edge of the fabric, the salvage edge. So that's the edge that isn't actually going to come undone. It's the edge that comes on the end of the roll of the fabric because I cut my rectangle all the way across which means I don't actually have to do anything to these ends. If it was a raw piece of fabric I could turn them, tuck in that end slightly. I could tuck it in like that and sew straight along. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to. I kind of like this salvage edge. So the final thing to do is press my hem edge and then we're done. It's getting a bit dark so hopefully you can still see this and the quality is okay. If not, I'll film my clip tomorrow and insert it now. But this is the final result. I think it's really cute. I'm obviously not wearing it with shoes right now. I'm really happy with it, how it turned out. I feel like the hardest part is possibly the buttonholes or maybe turning this through if you've never done those things before. Also great because it only takes thread and fabric. There's no elastic in this, which you could do an elastic if you wanted. But it's good if you're stuck in isolation and can't get any supplies and you've got some fabric around. If you do give this a go, please take a photo and tag me. I'd love to see it. We can start a little gang of all our maxi skirts. I really like it in this fabric actually. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. My sister and I, Ellen, make lots of fashion videos about all sorts of things. If you'd like to see more sewing videos, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, that's the end. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.